So I don't know if I've just had bad luck after bad luck after bad luck, but I've been looking forward to talking about this for a while, just because <laughs> it all started the day I arrived in Shenzhen. I'd been to China before at this point. I'd spent two years in Shanghai at Fudan University, but I was living in a tiny dorm room provided by the school, so I never actually dealt with renting before. I'd also never rented a place in the US, so the experience to me was completely new. I went straight from my parents' house in California to renting a place in Shenzhen. So my buddy Jake had gotten to Shenzhen before me, and he was already house hunting long before I got here. He went through all the ridiculous experiences for me. Thanks, Jake. Somehow, miraculously, on 58 Tongcheng, that app I talked about in the other video, he managed to find a situation in which a guy was directly renting his apartment. No agent. So not only was the place being rented directly by the landlord, but it was also on the second floor and had a huge private grass area right outside. That's pretty much unheard of here unless you're insanely rich. So I was super excited. I arrived in Shenzhen, ready to go see the place. The apartment itself was nothing special. Mediocre kitchen, old appliances, and a super dirty smoke hood thing. Seriously, what do we call those things in English? My mom always called it a blower. Literally the opposite of what they do. The only thing we cared about in this place was how much garden space there was. Front and back. But I made sure to clarify. We can use this space, right? Sure, sure, of course! He said, he goes on, the space in the back is public. You can't change it or do anything to it, but you can use it. Just don't leave things out there. But the front, that's your space. You can do whatever you want. We didn't even haggle on the price. 10,000 a month seems fair. Sign the lease. As I mentioned in the previous video, the place was filthy. It needed a serious wipe down. So right away, we got to cleaning. I began opening up all the cabinets and, uh-oh. I snapped a photo and sent it to the landlord. He says, Oh, I just bought the place and I never even opened that cabinet. Just don't use the top shelf. Great. Okay, moving on. Having never rented a place in China before, I just assumed that the disgusting mattresses left on the bed were going to be thrown out before we moved in. Dumb assumption. My bedroom had three mattresses on it. One normal IKEA mattress and two coconut pads of different sizes on top. I quickly realized that he intended for us to use them. I lifted up the coconut pads and found a lovely sweat pee stain right on top, just for me. Just for me. I sent a photo to the landlord. He informed me that that was a nice IKEA mattress and I should just clean it. So I tried. It got worse. I threw it out and bought a nice new mattress for myself. Now, before we signed the lease, the landlord promised that he would replace the tiny old refrigerator and get a new TV. So, as promised, the next day he had the fridge delivered. And he informed us that fridges need to settle for a day after they're shipped because they're tipped on their side. So we shouldn't turn it on for 24 hours. He got us a brand new mold-filled fridge. Thanks for the fridge! When mold gets into the fan inside of a fridge, it's basically impossible to clean it out. I sprayed it with mold killer, didn't do much. I should have gotten rid of it immediately, but I was new to the landlord-tenant game and figured that I'd just have to deal with it. Now amidst all this, we got to know our neighbors. And by got to know, I mean realized that they had a little foo-foo teddy dog named Doodoo -doo that would bark its mouth off every time you walk by. But the obnoxious part is the fact that they didn't even attempt to stop it. They'd just give her a doo -doo. Come here, Dudu! Come here, Dudu! Hmm, let me give you a little pat on the head for barking at the strangers. Oh, Dudu! But we ignored it, like good neighbors do. So after getting nice and set up, we decided to start working on our garden. We got some wood on Alibaba and began making some planting boxes. That's when I discovered the nasty water leak coming from the outside drain. I took a photo and sent it to the landlord. He tells me to call the management of the community. Okay. I did. They said, we'll have someone come look at it. And that's exactly what they did. They had someone come and look at it. That's a problem. Thanks! Meanwhile, they also felt the need to be constantly watering the grass in the backyard. The fuck is he doing? It's so wet that it's like a pool. Rain or shine, they were out there several times a month with basically a fire hose drenching the grass. 
It was so wet out there that you couldn't walk without getting your feet stuck in the mud. Made the whole area basically useless except for the few super hot days in the middle of the summer when it actually managed to dry up. The rest of the time, it was a pond. A few weeks passed and I ordered a compost bucket so we didn't have to throw away our food scraps. I used it for a few days before a little boy came to play on our balcony and broke it. Thanks, kid! This turned out to be a recurring problem. The public staircase had a door that led to this garden area. And there was a small step separating our balcony from the public space. So kids completely ignored the step and treated the whole place like their garbage can. They'd come by, play with their cheap plastic crap toys, and then once they inevitably broke, they'd leave them in pieces on our balcony. Finally, I'd had enough, and I put up a fence. A few days later, I get a text from the landlord. I'm not allowed to put up a fence in the public area. I explained to him, this is not a public space. This is our balcony, and I'm preventing kids from messing with our stuff. It's at this point that he informs us, oh no, actually this is not our private balcony. Huh? No, this is actually public space, and we can't use it for our own purposes. Oh no. Um, excuse me? I literally asked you that question specifically before we moved in. I said to you, I wanted this place because it had this private balcony space that I wanted to use. He says, well, the neighbors are complaining that you took away their space for hanging clothes and you need to put the things back the way they were. The way they were? You mean with cigarette butts and trash all over the place and a big mildew spot from the leaking drain that you haven't fixed yet? And you're telling me that the neighbors who live in the most expensive city in China, who most of which owned their apartment because they bought it 40 years ago when it was basically free, and it is now worth millions of dollars, not RMB, can't afford a dryer and instead need to hang their clothes outside my bedroom window? Yes, that's what he's telling me. So I had to rip out my fence and say, welcome children. I kept my garden though, screw them. Meanwhile, the nasty water is still spilling up from the drain and making it a nasty sludge on the floor. Great, but that's totally fine. After all, it's public space. It wasn't long after that that I realized that the balcony sink, the one above the festering, disgusting drain, the one that's on public space, gets its water from our apartment. There's literally just a PVC pipe that goes out a hole drilled in our wall from our kitchen sink that goes around the corner and into the outdoor sink. So now it's a private public balcony in which we get to pay for the water, but everyone else gets to use it. Then comes the rainy season and the public space floods. Oh no, not the private public space, the public public space. I, I don't know how you were confused. And our doo-doo neighbors are certain that it's because we put plants there. It couldn't possibly because the building company forgot to put drains there. No, it's definitely because we decided to make the area look nice. When there was trash there, it was fine. Eventually, the doo-doos complained so much that the management came and told us we needed to remove all our plants so that they could come in and fix the drain situation. And when they lifted all the tile up, it revealed they didn't install a drain and my apartment literally just had a hole in the wall that poured laundry water onto the ground. And then that ran all the way along the wall to the clogged drain. And since the ground is basically flat, our laundry water was also running the other direction instead of toward the drain and then just pooling in the spot with no drain. Amazing. Oh, but definitely because of my plants. I told the landlord that they told him he needed to install a proper drain pipe. He said, tell the management company. <laughs> so after tearing out all our plants and with the backyard still flooded, our apartment became rather lame. The pandemic had started by this point and my girlfriend's early childhood center had closed down so she was living with us now. She'd helped us make some nice upgrades to the place to make it more homey, including installing ceiling fans and swapping them for the overly bright previous fixtures. And when she moved in, she also brought a combo washer dryer machine that was way nicer than the old crap one that the landlord had. So I sent him a message saying, hey, we have a much better washing machine with a built-in dryer. It's only $300 and we can sell your old one. And then when we leave, we can leave you with this one. Would you be willing to pay us the difference? He responded, no, keep mine. Great. 
So now we have a great washer and a shitty washer, and he wants us to get rid of the great one. So we covered up the shitty one, moved it outside, and left it. We also sold the moldy fridge and bought a nice new one. Remember when I mentioned in the last video that the landlord provides the furniture? This place came with a crappy oil painting, an old couch, a TV stand and coffee table combo, a shoe rack, and a kitchen table with four chairs. At one point during the year, we get a text from the landlord. His friend is moving out and throwing out some old furniture. But it's better than what he's got in our place and he wants to swap it. But some of it is bigger than what he had previously and we don't have room for it all. He insists. We insist back. Eventually, he begrudgingly agrees to allow us to not take his big piece of shit. Finally, a win! One day, the three of us are out for dinner when I get a text from the landlord. He informs us that while he had tried to fool the government into thinking that he lived there so that he could send his kid to the school in that district, he hadn't succeeded. And in order to keep sending his kid to school, he'd have to move in. For those of you who don't know, the school position in China is tied to your residence. You go to the primary school associated with your living place. So rich people buy apartments just for the school position. They don't care about the apartment as a place to live, just for the school position. Then later on, when they don't need it anymore, they keep the house, rent it to you, and then if you want that school position, they charge you extra for it. Should be illegal. Anyway, that meant instead of spending the New Year break relaxing, we got to spend it frantically searching for a new place to live. Eventually, after an experience that I'm sure you can imagine based on my last video, we found a place and began to move. About 90% of the way through the move, we went out to dinner to celebrate, and I receive a call from the landlord. Apparently, he'd gone over to the apartment unannounced, and we hadn't locked the door. So he let himself in and was furious at what he saw. It was dirty! How dare we? How could we have left his apartment dirty after he'd given it to us in such a, a wonderful condition? Not only that, but where was his washing machine? And his moldy mattresses? And his fridge? And, and the lights? How, how could we be so reckless to leave his apartment unlocked? Who knows what could have happened? How would he ever rent it to the next tenant? Their wonderful apartment ruined. We hung up on it. He didn't care. He said, it was our responsibility to replace the mattresses and the fridge. Now, I would like to clarify here. When we threw out the old mattress, this was after there'd been several situations with little repairs, like the mold cabinets or the kitchen light fixture, where his solution was just a Band-Aid. I didn't want to deal with that, and figuring we'd live here for a long time, I didn't want a second-hand mattress, so I just bought my own. I don't want mold in my fridge, so I just bought my own, and figured I'd deal with it later. As for the washer and the light fixtures, just hadn't put them back yet. I never asked him to break into my apartment and then get preemptively angry because things weren't back in their place yet. It's not like the apartment was immaculate when he gave it to us. Unfortunately, I hadn't started this channel at that point, so I didn't take detailed video of how much work was involved in cleaning up the place from the state that he gave it to us in. At that time, I was under the impression that when you leave a place, you patch holes in the wall from hanging things, you mop the floors, you clean everything so that it's ready for a new tenant. I was fully prepared to set an example and show him how things should be done, considering that he'd completely failed to do so for us. But apparently, he not only has double standards, but his standard applies to before we've even left the place. Keep it clean while you move out and make sure that it's cleaner than when I gave it to you. Fine. You win. You want shit mattresses? I'll give you shit mattresses. So first we brought the washing machine back inside. I put back his light fixtures and began searching for an old fridge and mattresses. Luckily, one of our sweet neighbors, who felt bad for our situation, offered us an old fridge that she didn't need anymore. She helped me carry it over there and then began searching for mattresses. Didn't take long for us to discover an old mattress thrown away in the parking garage. I really wish I had started this YouTube channel at that point because, <laughs> because it would have been quite a sight. It was clearly being used by garbage workers at the community to have their smoke breaks. It was covered in cigarette butts and had clearly been thrown out a long time ago. Not exactly a new mattress. 
The lovely neighbor lady and I carried it back to the apartment and threw it down on the bed. We did the same thing one more time for the other bed, and voila! A beautiful new apartment, ready for their next unfortunate tenant. They never did fix the drain. Having experienced the lovely grossitude of landlord-provided furniture, for our next place, we went the opposite route and found a place with no furniture, with a promise from the landlord, which we got in writing, that she would provide furniture. She gave us a budget, and we could pick it out. But before any of that furniture arrived, that meant several weeks of this. Gotta say, though, it was actually kind of fun. It was around that time that we received an update from the nice neighbor lady about the status of our old place. Are you fucking serious? Apparently, he paid someone to get rid of the mattresses and the fridge. What a piece of shit human being. After the fit you and your wife threw? Just wow. Glad to be done with that guy. This new place was the start of a new experience. Since we could use our own furniture, we got to choose where everything went this time. Most people install their washing machines on the balcony, but coming from such a big balcony previously, I didn't want to give up the tiny space that we had. So we installed the washing machine in the bathroom. We carried it in, lowered it down gently, and while squatting, my butt gently bumped the toilet. And it fell over and broke. Woo! Great start! When I tried to throw out the broken toilet, I was informed that, oh, no, 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 you can't put this in the dumpster. No, I, no, I would have to take it to a special waste facility. You can't throw a toilet into the dumpster. What, am I crazy? Cool. I brought it back to my apartment, smashed it with a hammer, and threw it in the dumpster. Luckily, this landlord wasn't as spiteful as our old one, and she agreed to replace the toilet that she knew probably shouldn't have fallen over that easily. Now, I'd like to take a moment and pause here just to explain something. First of all, yes, I realize that I look different because I'm recording this on a different day because this story is way longer than I anticipated. But also, please don't take this as an indication that living in China will just be like this. Not the case. A few terrible people are not representative of a whole country. The issue is that the area that I'm living in, the one that I actually even recommended that you live in, is kind of expensive. And the only people who are able to afford to buy these places are rich people. And they're extremely out of touch. Because of what happened with that last guy, we had to have a long talk with the new landlord about this new place and whether or not she would need to move in, considering that she too had bought this place for the school position. She and the agency both assured me that this would not be an issue. Foreshadowing much? This apartment was old, had 20-year-old newspaper in the ceiling, and stuff that just would randomly fall apart. But overall, it was a pretty awesome experience. There were some annoyances, like the fact that the market downstairs would start chopping meat at 5.30 in the morning, or that the neighbors all decided to remodel their apartments from scratch, not at the same time, but one after the other. So I had to listen to every day. But overall, nothing unacceptable or not understandable. This place was pretty great. Until we got that text from the landlord 10 months in that while she said she'd be happy to rent to us for several years and we had nothing to worry about, Actually, she'd have to move in in order to keep her daughter at the local public school. Are you kidding me? Did you forget the three-hour conversation that we had about exactly this? Time to move again. But by this time, I'd become a pro at knowing exactly what to look for and what to make sure to ask when looking at apartments. So while the actual apartment hunt itself was stressful and obnoxious, at least, in the end, we found a place that was not only an awesome deal, but, well, actually, it was kind of weird. Let me explain. Now, for comparison, our first place was 82 square meters, 10,000 RMB a month. The second place was 91 square meters, 9,000 a month. This new place is 156 square meters, and they were asking for 15,000. Luckily, I'd seen this place listed a year ago, and clearly it had not been rented since. So I knew they were having trouble renting it. We offered 12000 The agent threw a fit. He kept trying to tell us, You don't realize this place is actually a lot 
bigger than your previous place. Like, it's bigger, so it's gonna cost more. You just, it's 15,000. Maybe we can get it down to 14,000, but what you're not understanding is this place is actually bigger than your previous places. While we would respond, you realize it's on the first floor where kids can climb on your windows and that it's been empty for a year, right? He couldn't seem to comprehend that it's not just a matter of size, and he also kept telling us that we could only go see the place at 7.30 in the morning on a Saturday or on a work day only during working hours. We found another agent. That agent managed to get it down to 12000 a month, just like we asked for. The previous agent made sure to message us and let us know that we were trash people because he wasn't going to get his commission now. I think you're just trash at your job, dude. So because this place had been empty for a year, it had some issues. We made it very clear what we expected. The dusty, spiderweb-covered couch and air conditioners needed to be professionally cleaned. Same with the oily stove oil suck machine. The yo yen Seriously, I still don't know how to say that in English. The stove needed to be fixed, the burnt-out bulbs replaced, and the pointless, extra-useless furniture removed, including the old smelly mattresses. Not doing that again. The landlord agreed to none of those conditions. She explained to us that the actual landlord lives in Shanghai, and he doesn't want to deal with the place that he bought, so he might also want to keep that dirty old furniture and use it when he comes back. But since he doesn't want to deal with it, he instead had to put her in charge. And, uh, well, she doesn't want to deal with it either, so... Needing to have those things done would mean that she'd have to do something, and that's just too much work for her. So we said, okay, then we don't want the place. The agent, worried about losing her commission, said that she would see what she can do. So we let her take over. A few hours later, she says, all of our requirements will be covered. No worries, just like that. Wow. Oh, well, except for the mattresses. Yeah, see those? The landlord wants to keep those. She adds, you could just prop it up vertically against the wall and then just leave it there while you live here. You realize that looks like shit and just waste space, right? Oh, you can get a nice cover for it on Taobao. So we sign the lease and start moving. Once again, we made sure to patch up the holes and make sure that everything looked better than the sad state it was in when we received it, setting a good example. It didn't matter though, cause just like the last guy, she tore the entire apartment down right after we left. Except she was at least apologetic and even asked me for advice on how to remodel. Then asked me for links where she could buy the furniture that we had so she could get the same stuff. But back at our new place, we get the professional cleaners in to do their work and then send the bill off to the broker. The broker sends the bill to the landlord, who again says, no, not sure why she expected anything different. So in the end, the broker ate the cost. I felt a little bad, but again, I wanted to rent directly from the landlord. Not my fault the brokers exist just to stand in the way. Anyway, as things are finally starting to settle down, we're in our new apartment, stuff everywhere though, because the greedy landlord only gave us the minimum three days leeway before we had to start paying rent, and we didn't want to have to start paying rent at two places at the same time, so we moved everything over as fast as possible, we all started to take our showers at the new place for the first time. And that's when we discovered that the water heater, which worked the one time we tested it, only works 10% of the time. The other 10%, it just says, error and won't light and then shuts off. <sighs> so we reach out to the broker. She tells us to ask the community manager. Manager says they have no idea how to fix it and recommend an external repairman. 
To our incredible surprise, the landlord's employee, the one who's been our point of communication, says that she'll pay for it. But not without guilt tripping us and saying, I mean, you signed the lease and said that it was working, so this is your apartment now. Repairs are your responsibility. So what you're saying is I should have come in and taken a shower here before assigning the lease just to make sure that everything works right? I chose to ignore her and just accept that as permission that I can drill into the walls because, I mean, it's my apartment now, right? But that got me thinking. You know, I never tested the oven before I moved in. I didn't come over and, you know, cook a meal to make sure that the oven was working properly. This apartment was purchased in 2007, and the landlord used to live here. So, because he's obsessed with Europe, yeah, I'll explain that one later, he had to have an oven. But then he never proceeded to ever once turn it on. So it's a 15-year-old brand new oven. I turned it on, it seemed to be going all right, okay, and then all the power in the house went off. Guess what the landlord's employee said when I told her? Just assume that this is a house that doesn't come with an oven, and then leave it there. Excuse me? I planned to use that oven. If it doesn't work, then let me throw it out at least, and then I'll just put my own oven in its place and at least save the space in the kitchen. She says, well, no, because the landlord might want it. Are you kidding me? The landlord, who lives in Shanghai and has a 15-year new old broken oven and bought this place for 700,000 RMB, while it's now worth at least 10 million, probably 20 million, wants to keep the broken oven just in case he wants it when he comes to never come back here, then fix it now! Why wait the next 15 years again? So she begrudgingly accepts, okay, I'll call someone to fix the broken oven. Meanwhile, the water heater repairman comes over, spends three hours trying to fix it, and then says, well, so you see, the, the controller is broken and I need to order a new one and that'll take a couple days, so I'm gonna need to get a deposit from you to order it and then you can pay for the rest of the repair when I come back. Okay, two days later, he comes back, another three hours go by, and then he goes, um, so I'm gonna go get a second hand one, like 80% new, guaranteed, and I'm just gonna replace it. It'll be faster that way, and I'll just, I'll charge you the same price. To which obviously we go, how are you gonna get a new, well, a second hand one, but still another whole water heater for the price of a repair. He assures us it won't be a problem. Don't worry. So we asked the landlord, the employee. Being on our fourth day of no hot water, it's my water the landlord says, go ahead and do it. So we agreed. He comes back with an old, worse, not high enough capacity water heater and begins to install it. We call him out on it, but he continues to do the work anyway, assuring us that it will be just fine. It doesn't matter what the capacity is, eight liters, 12 liters, it's all the same, it's not a big deal. He's obviously wrong, but with no idea what to do at this point, we just let him continue. He proceeded to be unable to install it and then just left without saying anything, just disappeared and left all of his tools there. Confused, we reached out to him, asking where he was. He says, I went home. What? At this point, he's left both old heaters in pieces on the floor and water dripping from the wall outlets that also just gush water everywhere anytime anyone turns the water on. And he says, I'll come back tomorrow with an 80% new one. At this point, I was pissed. And every time I put a bucket underneath the water outlet thing to catch the drips, the water would start gushing out and go past the bucket. 
But then, if I move the bucket over to catch the gushes, it's just constantly dripping onto the counter. And we only have one bucket. And a cup's not big enough. And you have to empty the bucket. So this was my solution. So it became the broker's job to say, I'm buying a new one. Come and get your tools tomorrow and return the money that you charged earlier. I gotta say though, as cringy as it was when he came back to get his stuff, I still felt super bad for him just watching him walk away. The thought quickly left my head though when we finally had our new one installed, took our first real shower and found that the shower drain doesn't drain properly. Management company, again. They come over and 10 minutes later, it's fixed. Next shower. No, it's not. They come over again. It's fixed. Is it though? As long as you guys are here, can you help us fix this light that's not working? He tries. He can't. Amidst everything being broken, the washing machine started making this awful grinding noise and just refused to drain. Why does everything have to break at the same time? So we call the company. Little Swan, it's called. They send over a repairman. He looks at the washing machine for about three minutes and then goes, so this one part is out of alignment and it needs to be realigned. So you can either repair it or just get a new part. Yeah, I was confused too. I'm sorry, what? Is the part broken or just out of alignment? Out of alignment. Okay, so why would I get a new one? So you just, you just want me to fix it? Yeah. He spends another three minutes, not an exaggeration, and then goes, okay, it's fixed. Your total is 500 RMB. That's like 80 bucks. If this were in the US, I would think that was normal, but for China to do basically nothing? We argued for like 10 minutes and he was willing to lower it to 480. That night, my girlfriend didn't sleep well. She couldn't stop thinking about how she'd totally been ripped off. Finally, in the morning, she calls the company, and they tell her that their most expensive repair is 120 RMB, and that they have no record of them having ever done a repair for us. What? Yeah, it turns out that when she went on WeChat to search up their number, there was a Little Swan official page and a Little Swan Repair. Apparently, Little Swan Repair is the name of another company that rips people off for repairs and has no affiliation with the Little Swan company. She called them back and told them that she's gonna call the police unless she gets her money back. They gave her half her money back. I said she should get all of it back, but she felt bad for the repair guy because he was just a pawn of the company and was worried about getting screwed and also not getting paid. <sighs> Meanwhile, I start setting up my Chaoshan Gongfu Ta table. I plug it in and the outlet doesn't work. Management company! He comes over, replaces the outlet, which I had to go buy, and then goes, Oh, um, yeah, see, I know you pay this monthly fee for our services that's mandatory and you can't get out of, and it's paid by the square foot, so it's actually really expensive at this place, but, um, yeah, this is actually extra because this has to deal with electricity, so you have to pay me for that. Would you believe that the landlord actually agreed to pay for that? Yeah, I was surprised, too. Next, I moved on to the kitchen. I begin to scrub the counters and, uh, oh, nice, the tiles fell off. No! Hey, management company! Oh, we can't do that. Uh, we'll help you call someone. Oh, yeah, I trust you. You've got the best resources for that. The next day, the oven repairman comes over. Guy turned out to be a beast of a repairman. He fixes the oven, he fixes the counter tiles, he fixes the plumbing for our dishwasher and washing machine that I didn't even tell you was broken. Then he even attempted to fix the light fixture. He couldn't though. So close. But now with the oven fixed, I got two ovens. Oh, and did I mention that the landlord gave us just a single key and then said, oh, I bet you can pay to change the locks. Fine. So I decided to change it to one of those thumbprint locks. I sent a message to a company online and said, hey, do I need to measure anything or how does this work? Are there sizes? Nope, he says one size fits all. Now I've never dealt with locks before. I have no experience in this field. So my thought was, oh, okay, maybe doors are just standardized 
so that the locks will always fit and they're interchangeable because they're always the same size. Lots of things are that way. Nope, doesn't work that way. So would you believe that when it doesn't fit, the guy had to spend over an hour trying to makeshift it because it was just the wrong size. Check out his solution. Basically destroyed the door in the process, but not my house. Not like the landlord gives a shit about the house, because if he did, probably wouldn't have let these random mold spots grow and then put shitty plastic in front of it instead of, you know, getting rid of it. Meanwhile, again, I got to work on the next moving in task, installing my ceiling fans. Now, you might think, wait, why are you telling us about this part? What's interesting about ceiling fans? Well, that's when I get into just how weird this house is. The guy who owns it bought it in 2007 and then just went, you know, I want a European house. And the designers must have gone, well, what kind? What do you, what do you mean European? And he said, you know, Europe. You mean like Italian, French, German? And he went, yeah. So they did exactly that. Stucco walls, random arches, fake fireplace, floors that look super nice but then actually aren't, an oven. But the weirdest part was that the ceiling here is wood, but just in this room. It's not the original concrete that you'd find in any normal apartment. It's been lowered to put these fake support beams in, and then this chandelier weighs like a hundred pounds and is hanging from this cracked wood. I never would have thought that it could support that kind of weight, considering how bendy it is. Luckily, my fan weighs way less, so I don't think I have to worry. I think. But now, finally, finally, this saga comes to an end. Since we knew what to look for beforehand, the broker got screwed instead of us. We got all of the crap furniture removed, except for the fucking mattresses, and everything started out clean. Ish, kind of. So now, we've got this dope, massive apartment at a super great price for Shenzhen, with all the space we need to make videos. I'm recording this video in the closet room. Yeah, the closet room. The original floor plan had four bedrooms, and now it's just one massive bedroom, one normal room, and one closet room with sticky drawers because the last tenant decided to use spray glue to put uncleanable paper inside instead of just cleaning them. I've never seen a weirder apartment. This is the least Chinese style apartment I've ever seen in China. But can't complain. Wait, yes I can. The last tenant must have had a kid who was just obsessed with balls. Because the entire apartment is just filled with these random fuzzy orange balls. Under the beds, under the couch cushions, behind the TV. I swear this kid was just running around with buckets of balls and every chance he got he'd sprinkle a few balls and mom lifts up the mattress to wipe the dust and he's just like, BALLS! BALLS! WOO! Speaking of kids, the kids in this community not all of them, but enough of them to make me complain about it, are just ridiculous, and their grandparents have no clue how to raise them. They like to stand on this ledge here and poke their heads in and go, Oh, this isn't my house, but now I'm gonna watch you poop. And then their grandparents go, Ho, 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 ho. That's right, sonny boy. That's not your house. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Little Wang Bing Bong is growing up. I told the management company, hey, this is an issue. I'd like to get some plants here so they can't come up here and play. And I was told, followed by, it's far too dangerous. Uh-huh, dangerous. Aren't you so thankful, my awesome patrons, for supporting this type of content? Although I guess if you made it this far into the video, you must have been enjoying it. I didn't realize how much I had to complain about. I would like to reiterate though, I'm not saying this because living here is terrible. It's actually quite the opposite. It's just that things here can be so great that the contrast of just running into 
dumb problems like this that seem like they just shouldn't be problems at all is infuriating. Like the fact that I can afford a place of this size working here and then still also have the free time to make videos like this and then just never have to sit in traffic because of the amazing public transportation here and then the price of transportation is basically free and the convenience of everything is just unmatched and life quality here overall is just awesome. I just really needed to call out my landlords for some of their lack of humanity. With the exception of the middle one, she even helped pay for some of the moving expenses, so more so the first and the last one and just the ridiculous situation of the middle one, but I'm done complaining about it. I made the video, dusting my hands of this problem, moved in, we're done. Whoops. Anyway, I use that word way too much. I would like to give a real thanks to Bobby, Joshua, Mark, and Faux Pas. And then there's some new ones. We got Taylor Sharkey, John Smith, Stephen and Christy, thanks bruv sis, and Salman Bana, another friend of mine. Seriously, thanks guys. Jeez, it took me so long to edit this video that I now have more people to thank. So thanks to Trevor Dung, Matt M, and Wayne Sweet, Wayne Sweat, Wayne, please correct me on how to pronounce your name. Thanks so much, guys. Seriously, really appreciate it.